welcome to another Big Bang. Today's a paper programme, which doesn't mean you get to read the paper, Gareth. Sorry. In today's programme, we'll be showing you how to make your very own optical illusion. We'll be discovering the strange but true secrets of the art of alchemy. It is indeed, you know. And the Big Bang Guide to the Ultimate All-Terrain Vehicles. Let's Off-Road! I can't do it. That's why it's called my impossible paper trick. You know what to do? All you have to do is make that simple structure. But I can only use one piece of paper and I can't stick it. But I don't get it because there's a gap here and then there's a gap here. But this flap is twice the size of both of them. There's a trick to this. Look, if I can explain with this piece of card. It's uh, green on one side, red on the mm -hmm. other side, right? Mm -hmm. And there's the flat bit. Ah, oh, but that's not what you made here. Aha. Uh -huh. But if you cut from one edge of the card up to the flap mm -hmm. and then put in an imaginative and clever twist like that, there's your impossible shape. That's brilliant. But I've got a trick for you. You need okay. a piece of paper and then you need to cut it into three equal bits. Right. But don't cut all the way down. Stop about eight centimetres from the top, about there. Now, open it out and hold it at the two corners like this, mm -hmm. and now you have to tear it into three bits. <laughs> you didn't do it. Let's have a go. Uh, yeah. uh, OK, I didn't do it. Well, there's a trick to this, and I'll show you how to do it at the end of the programme. Now, whose turn is it to do the recycling? Have you been time travelling again, Cynthia? Those dinosaurs are a pretty fierce bunch. Here's a few tips for the time traveller. Try to learn the basics of Einstein's theory of relativity. Pay particular attention to this, this, and this. The easiest way to make a time machine is to find a black hole. And then spin it round very fast. Eventually, it will change into a black donut. Place a large metal rod down the middle and connect them up with a gigantic battery. To travel back in time, just run down the rod as fast as you can. Lightspeed should do it. You'll pop out the other side minutes before you set off. Once you're in the past, watch out. Meeting your future self can be a distressing experience. It's particularly confusing if more than one of you time travel back to the same event. And remember the golden rule. Don't try and change the past. You may disappear in a relative paradox. Oh no, too late. What are you doing, Violet? I'm searching for sunken treasure. Violet, there's a little person inside your jar. I know, that's my diver. <laughs> you have to press down on the lid of the jar and the diver dives and then try and hook these hooks around the treasure at the bottom. Go on, you have a go. Oh, yeah. My diver may look beautiful now, but she started off life as a yoghurt pot. You come around the yoghurt pot and then paint her. Now you need to cut two short bits of straw and stick them to her back, and then get two small bits of yoghurt pot and then just stick them at the top of the straw to seal it. Next, get some paper clips and cut a bit off to make the hooks which you stick to her feet at the bottom. And then the really important bit, you need to put some plasticine on her feet. It makes her look clumsy, but she does need it to float properly. Check out how she floats by bobbing her up and down in a glass of water. Now, actually, she's bobbing up far too quickly there. So I need to add some more plasticine. And you keep adding and taking away plasticine until you get it right. Let's see how she does now. That's better. She's bobbing up much more slowly and gently. Now, to make the ocean, you need a jar of water and some pebbles and a treasure chest, of course, and make the treasure using bits of yoghurt pot painted gold with paper clips at the top there. So I put the stones in to make the ocean bed. That's probably enough now. And float the treasure down and the rest of the treasure in that we've got to hook up. And don't forget, your diver. Down you go. Now, you need to seal the top of the jar with a balloon, but cut the end off the balloon first, then stretch out the top of the balloon and stretch it over the jar. You'll probably need someone to help you with this to hold the jar still. And afterwards, you just seal around there to make sure it doesn't ping off. How are you getting on, Gareth? 
Well, she's down there, but I haven't mastered picking up the treasure just yet. Why does this work, Viola? Well, it's because there are air bubbles trapped in the straws. When you push down on the lid, it forces water up into the straws, which squashes the air bubbles. Good, isn't it? It's fantastic. Well, hey, I've got some. This is gold, the most precious metal in the world. For thousands of years, it's been coveted by the rich and powerful. This is lead, one of the least precious of metals. In fact, it's quite cheap. It is coveted by the French for making really tacky models of the Eiffel Tower. But what if it were possible to turn lead into gold? Imagine the power, the wealth. Ooh. This is a strange but true story of the alchemists who tried to turn lead into gold. The first alchemists were religious men and thinkers. They studied and meditated in order to reach perfection. Of course, some got closer than others. Gold is one of the most pure and perfect of all metals. And in medieval times, people believed that all things will turn to their most perfect form. So, an imperfect metal, like lead, would eventually turn into gold. All alchemists seek to do was to speed that process up. Rich people paid alchemists loads of money to try and discover the secret and get, well, even richer. But it wasn't easy. This isn't easy, you know. So, lots of alchemists cheated. Madam? Oh, thank you. Oi, this is a fake! Now, you might think that these people were a bit soft in the head, but up until only a couple of hundred years ago, alchemy was studied by all the great thinkers and scientists. And in the hunt for gold, they discovered loads of things. Mineral acids, alkalis, alcohol, not to mention porcelain and gunpowder. But in all of this, they didn't manage to make one speck of gold. Many alchemists were roasted alive for failing to produce the promised gold, and it was mostly men doing it because women alchemists were persecuted as witches before they even got started. The really amazing thing is that it is, in fact, possible to turn lead into gold. I knew it! All you have to do is change the number of particles in a lead atom using a particle accelerator. Now, so where do I find a particle acceler accelerator? Acceler accelerator. Accelerator. There's a very big one under a mountain in Switzerland. Well, you lay who off I go then. Now, hang on a minute, Gareth. It's actually very expensive and dangerous to use a particle accelerator. And if you want gold, the easiest and cheapest way to get it is to dig it up out the ground. Have you got a shovel? <laughs> What do you think? Great. Not great. It's not a chessboard, it's an optical illusion. Watch what happens when I grab this handle and I pull every other row of tiles just a little bit. Oh, it's gone all wobbly. Have you tilted the rows so they're no. slanting or something? No, I promise you that every one of these lines is still perfectly parallel and all these squares are still perfectly square. It just looks wobbly. That's bizarre. How does it work? Well, it's all to do with the parallax effect and the mid-frequency of the optical nerves of your retina. Mm. You haven't got a clue, have you? No, not a clue. <laughs> but I know how this optical illusion works. Ladies and gentlemen, I will turn this blue piece of card into a living, breathing thing. Watch this. What you do is you use um, uh, a paper fastener like that, you pop it through a smaller blue square, mm -hmm. then adhere the smaller blue square onto that blue square so it looks like this. But that's still blue and square. As blue and square as a depressed piece of toast. That's pretty blue and pretty square. Mm -hmm. OK, next stage is to pass your paper fastener through the hole in the centre of a yellow larger card, like thus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then adhere to the top four bits of red square overlapping my blue square till it looks like this. 
That is blue and square, as blue and square as Ken Barlow in a denim jacket. You can't get bluer or squarer than that. All right, then, here we go. Marvel, as my blue square takes its first breath. See, as it inhales, it expands, it gets larger, then contracts as it exhales. Out and in, out and in, out and in. Wow, that's incredible. It's a living, breathing square. Well, it actually only looks as though it's getting larger and smaller. You see, when you see the square in that position, you can only see the distance between the two straight sides of mm -hmm. the square. But when I rotate it, the corners come into view, and then you can see the much greater distance across ah. the diagonal. So it appears to be getting larger and smaller, larger and smaller. As blue and unsquare as Manchester City trying to play the offside trap. <laughs> Come on, Gareth, time for our big stuff bike race. Violet, you're not telling me that you want to race me in this weather? Oh, yes, but I tell you what, if you're worried, I'll give you a head start. Head start? Won't need it. See you at the finish. Ha! Ha! Poor Gareth, that racing bike of his might be fine on roads, but if he'd read the race plan properly, he'd know we're going off-road. And when you hit the rough stuff, what you need is chunky tyres like mine to give you real grip. There has to be a better way. No way! If you're going off-road, this is what you need. It's called a Pinsgauer. It's an Austrian vehicle used by the army for moving heavy equipment over rough ground and up sheer cliffs. And it'll do it even in conditions like this. It's immensely powerful. And these wheels are rather cleverly pivoted so that no matter what the ground is doing, they always remain in contact with the ground. Let's face it, Berlin doesn't stand a chance. There has to be a better way. Yeah, very good, Gareth. But when you really need to make tracks, you don't want a vehicle with wheels. Now it's time to catch up with the Joes. Rat. Sorry, Gareth, there's no way you were going to beat me while I'm driving this monster. It's a BV206, so it's designed for the Arctic. What it does is it kind of lays its own road. These huge tracks spread the weight out over a large area so the vehicle doesn't sink in. Uh, see you back at the flat. So, how are you getting on with my tearing the paper into three bits challenge then, Gareth? I've given up. It can't be done. Yes, it can. There's a trick to it. And I'll show you if you pay me. All right. I will pay you tuppence, no more. That'll do. OK, remember the challenge was to tear the paper into three bits mm -hmm. by holding the corners. Mm -hmm. Now, what you do is you sellotape the money to the top there like that and then get hold of the corners and... <laughs> Yay, well, well done! How did that work, Nelly? Thanks for the bump on the head. <laughs> well, the coin is pretty heavy. Compared to the paper, I right. suppose. Right. Yeah. And heavy things are hard to move, so it holds the middle bit in place just long enough for you to rip the side bits off. It's a cheap trick. Only cost you tuppence. And a bang on the head. <laughs> All right, I'll show you a trick, but I'm going to need a three-pound coin. I'm being had here, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll have a £12 note then from you.
There's lots more tricks and makes in the Big Bang book. Out now.